your comments to your FBI family. I know we're heartfelt. Know that um, even though there are some in the administration who've tried to smear your reputation, you had Acting Director McCabe in public testimony a few weeks back and in public testimony yesterday reaffirm that the vast majority of the FBI community had great trust in your leadership and obviously uh, trust in your integrity. I want to go through a number of the meetings that you referenced in your testimony. And let's start with the January 6th meeting in Trump Tower, where you went up with a series of officials to brief the President-elect on the Russia investigation. My understanding is you remained afterwards to brief him on, again, quote, some personally sensitive aspects of the information you relayed. Now, you said after that briefing, you felt compelled to document that conversation, that you actually started documenting it as soon as you got into the car. Now, you've had extensive experience at the Department of Justice and at the FBI. You've worked on the presidents of both parties. What was it about that meeting that led you to determine that you needed to start putting down a written record? A combination of things. I think the circumstances, the subject matter, and the person I was interacting with. Circumstances first, I was alone with the President of the United States, or the President-elect, soon to be President. The subject matter, I was talking about matters that touch on the FBI's core responsibility and that relate to the President, President-elect personally. And then the nature of the person. I was honestly concerned that he might lie about the nature of our meeting, and so I thought it really important to document. That combination of things I'd never experienced before, but it led me to believe I got to write it down, and I got to write it down in a very detailed way. I think that's a very important statement you just made. And my understanding is that then, again, unlike your dealings with presidents of either parties in your past experience, in every subsequent meeting or conversation with this president, you created a written record. Did you feel that you needed to create this written record of these memos because they might need to be relied on at some future date? Sure. I created records after conversations, and I think I did it after each of our nine conversations. If I didn't, I did it for nearly all of them, especially the ones that were substantive. I knew that there might come a day when I would need a record of what had happened, not just to defend myself, but to defend the FBI and, and our integrity as an institution and the independence of our investigative function. That's what made this so, so difficult, is it was a combination of circumstances, subject matter, and the particular person. And so in all your experience, this was the only president that you felt like in every meeting you needed to document, because at some point, using your words, he might put out a non-truthful representation of that meeting. Now, that's that's right, Senator. And I, I, as I said in my written testimony, as FBI director, I interacted with President Obama, and I spoke only twice in three years uh, and didn't document it. When I was Deputy Attorney General, I had one one-on-one -on -one meeting with President Bush about a very important and difficult national security matter. I didn't write a memo documenting that conversation either. Sent a quick email to my staff to let them know there was something going on. But I didn't feel with President Bush the need to document it in that way. Be again, because of the combination of those factors just wasn't present with either President Bush or President Obama. I think that is very significant. I think others will probably question that. Now, our the chairman and I have requested those memos. It is our hope that the FBI will get this committee access to those memos so that, again, we can read that contemporaneous rendition so that we've got your side of the story. Now, I know members have said and press have said um, that if you were a great deal has been made of whether the president you are asked to, in effect, indicate whether the president was the subject of any investigation. And my understanding is prior to your meeting on January 6th, you discussed with your leadership team whether or not you should be prepared to assure then-President-elect Trump that the FBI was not investigating him personally. Now, my understanding is your leadership team agreed with that, but was that a unanimous decision? Was there any debate about that? It wasn't unanimous. Um, one of the members of the leadership team had a view that although it was Technically true, we did not have a counterintelligence file case open on then-President-elect Trump. His concern was 
because we're looking at the potential, again, that's the subject of the investigation, coordination between the campaign and Russia, because it was President Trump, President-elect Trump's campaign, this person's view was inevitably his behavior, his conduct will fall within the scope of that work. And so he was reluctant to make the statement that I made. I disagreed. I thought it was fair to say what was literally true. There is not a counterintelligence investigation of Mr. Trump. And I decided in the moment to say it, given the nature of our conversation. At that moment in time, did you ever revisit that as uh, in, in these subsequent sessions? With the FBI leadership with the team? team? Sure. The team. And, and uh, the, the leader who had that view, it didn't change. Uh, his view was still that it was probably, although literally true, his concern was it could be misleading because the nature of the investigation was such that it might well touch, obviously it would touch the campaign, and the person at the head of the campaign would be the candidate. And so that was his view throughout. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.